Good evening and welcome to episode 92 of Mystery, Murder, and Mayhem. Tonight's episode isn't true crime, but it comes from the spooky files and I just wanted to share the story. Welcome to Mystery, Murder, and Mayhem. Now, like I said, this isn't a true crime story tonight. Um, But y'all know that me and the kids love a good wrestling story. And tonight's story is about a wrestler. He was a wrestler in the 1940s. And his name was Morris or Maurice Tillette. And he was this wildly popular wrestler. And he was known as the French Angel. Well, he was born in 1903 in the Ural Mountains of Russia, but he was French by blood. His mom was a school teacher, and his dad worked as a railroad engineer. And he got the nickname Angel from his mom because she thought that he had such an innocent little face. Now, when Maurice was 14 years old, he and his mom left Russia because of the revolution that was taking place, and they settled in France. His father, he had passed away just some years before they moved. I believe I read that Maurice was eight when his dad died. Well, sometime around the time that he was turning 19, he started noticing that there was swelling in his hands and his feet and his head. So he went to doctors to see what was causing all of this. Well, the doctor diagnosed him with acromegaly. Now, acromegaly is a condition caused by this non-cancerous tumor that sits on the pituitary gland, and it causes the bones to overgrow, and as they overgrow, they thicken. And before that time, he had this completely normal appearance. And there's pictures of him online if you want to go look, but he's a little kid, and you would never guess that he looked so completely different as he grew older. And one thing I should mention is that because he didn't start having these symptoms until, or, you know, he wasn't diagnosed or anything until he was a young adult, it didn't affect his height. And he was billed as being um, five foot nine. So he wasn't very tall. Now, Maurice was quite the brilliant young man. And it's been said that he spoke 14 languages fluently. He received a law degree from the University of Toulouse, but he felt that he just wouldn't be successful in that line of work due to his appearance, and the illness had even deepened his voice. So, you know, back then, people, they weren't very kind to people who didn't fit into this ideal physical appearance. And I know they still aren't, but um, I think that people nowadays are more open, or a lot more open than they were back in those days. Well, anyway, because of that, he went into the French Navy for five years in their submarine service as an engineer. Well, fast forward to February of 1937, and Maurice, he met up with this guy named Carl Pagello while he's in Singapore. Now, these two men, they quickly became the very best of friends. Well, it just so happened that Pagello was a wrestler. And he was able to talk Maurice into entering the business. So Maurice and Carl, they moved to Paris for wrestling training and wrestled there for like two years before they moved to England. But World War II broke out and they had to flee to the United States because they were basically being forced out of England. And that was in 1939. Well, the following year, Maurice, while they're in America now, um, he meets up with a wrestling promoter named Paul Bowser. And Bowser really made a name for Maurice. And he was often the show's main event. Large crowds from, like, all over was coming to see this man wrestle. He was touted as being unstoppable. 
And as a matter of fact, he was undefeated for 19 months. And from May of 1940 to May of 1942, he was the AWA World Heavyweight Champion. Then he held that title again for a little while in 1944. So for two years, he was that promotion's World Heavyweight Champion. And I believe that was based in the Boston area. Well, because he was so popular, there were several wrestlers who entered the world of the sport with the word Angel in their ring name. There was Gil Guerrero, who went by the Black Angel, Tony Angelo, who was known as the Russian Angel, Clive Welsh was known as the Irish Angel, and there were several, several others. Now, even though he was this remarkable competitor his wrestling career didn't last very long though because in 1945 his health started deteriorating now he did continue to wrestle for a few years after that but his final match was in 1953 while he was working for the nwa mid-south area um but it was known back then as mid-state at that time now in that match he had agreed to lose his match to Bert Azarati. And this match, believe it or not, took place in Singapore. So the same place that his wrestling career began, it ended. Well, not only was Maurice a wrestling star, but he made appearances on the silver screen in French and American films, including the very first Superman movie. But sadly, he passed away the following year from a heart attack that he had had after learning of the death of his longtime friend, Carl Pagello. The two were buried together in the Chicago area, and their tombstone reads, Friends Whom Even Death Couldn't Part. Well, y'all, this isn't the end of Maurice's story. There's a bit more to it, and I'm going to get into that after a word from our sponsor. Listen, I'm not going to tell you about a product unless it's something I love and I use it on a daily basis. And what I'm about to tell you about is one of those. Over the years, I packed on quite a few pounds from having babies, stress, eating for comfort. And now as a 51 year old woman, hormones are not on my side at all. Now, I had been seeing people on social media talking about Obvi. They were talking about how much weight they've lost and how they feel so much better. They had nothing but good things to say about it. Of course, I was skeptical, but you know what? I gave in and I gave it a try. And boy, am I glad that I did. Over the past five weeks since I started using it, I've lost 22 pounds. I haven't tried every single product that they have, but I have to say my favorite is the Collagenic Burn. Two capsules at breakfast, another two at lunch, and I have energy for the entire day. And it's not that jittery energy and there's no crash when it's done doing its magic. And you know, you experience that with a lot of products out there. Plus, my hair and nails are growing like crazy and my achy joints feel better each day. Your results may not be exactly the same as mine, but I encourage you to give it a try. Now, all you have to do is click the link in the episode description for my Avi, and then you can save 15% by using the promo code MYSTERYM. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Maurice suffered with a condition known as acromegaly, and it gave him a physical appearance that many have said inspired the characteristics of the lovable ogre Shrek from the Shrek movies. That first came out in 2001. I kind of feel that's a bit cruel. I mean, he couldn't help his appearance. And everywhere that I've read anything about him said that he had this heart of gold. He was basically a teddy bear. And it was a health condition that caused his appearance to change. And not just some mask he put on or a character that he played. But anyway, after the first Shrek movie came out in 2001... Several sharp-eyed viewers noticed that Shrek bore the strikingly similar likeness of Maurice. Now, the producers of that film have neither confirmed nor denied that Maurice was indeed the inspiration. But you have to admit that it could very well be true. 
And again, this is not the end of our story about Maurice. His story is said to continue from beyond the grave, and this is where the spooky part comes in. Another longtime friend of Maurice's was a man named Patrick Kelly. Maurice and Patrick would get together and they would play chess. And in fact, Maurice had been an avid chess player for most of his life. Well, after Maurice passed away, Patrick had a plaster bus made of, of Maurice's head. But soon he started missing the days of playing chess with his buddy. So he purchased an electric or an electronic chess board called the Chess Challenger at a computer expo about 25 years after Maurice had passed away and he started playing with it. He even placed that plaster bust opposite of him so it'd be like old Tom's playing with his friend. While playing one day, he noticed that some of the moves the computer was making were those that had been Maurice's favorite moves. So he kept playing just to see what would happen. And that game went on for like three hours. So Patrick decided that he was tired and was going to bed. He got up to unplug the board and found that it was already unplugged. Now, keep in mind, there were no batteries in this chessboard. So I bet, you know, Patrick must have thought that he was losing his mind. Because he was so baffled by it, the next day he called up Fidelity Electronics, who had made the computer, and they sent out a technician. And the technician, it, he checked it out, you know, and, and he found nothing to be wrong with it. And that it had to have electricity to work, but that technician couldn't figure out how this computerized chessboard was doing moves that hadn't been programmed into it. Well, Fidelity Electronics was a very well-known company back then, and they didn't want to get this bad reputation, so they gave Patrick this brand new electronic chessboard. Well, soon after he received the new one, he came up with this new chess move, and he had it published in a newspaper, and then he sat down to play chess with his new computer. Now, when I say computer, it's not like keyboard, monitor, all that stuff. It's like a computerized chessboard. I mean, it's like a chessboard and it's got like the electronic stuff built into it. Well, soon after he received that one, like I said, he, he came up with a new chess move. He published it in the paper, all that. Um, But anyway, he starts playing with it and he gets frustrated because it, the machine or whatever you want to call it was playing back on its own. So he turned it off. But y'all get this. He had turned it off, but the computer kept playing. So it seemed like this computer was mimicking games that him and Maurice had played 20-something years ago. Patrick called the company again. A technician came back out, and he went over the second computer like with a fine-tooth comb. And he, this technician even removed that plaster bus from the room. And at that point, the computer started playing normally, like in the way that it had been designed to do. Well, that bus was taken in and examined. I think they even did like x-rays on it to make sure that there was nothing inside of it that would interfere with the computer. I guess like, the, you know, anything electronically. But it was found that it was only plaster. And when that bus was brought back to where the chessboard computer or whatever you want to call it was sitting, it went back to play in it as it had been playing when the bus was originally there before. Well, Patrick decided to check into this electric chessboard more on his own. So he set the chessboard up on these um, electric like drinking glasses, I believe what it was. Um, he left it unplugged and he had that plaster bust sitting nearby. Well, he had brought in these um, scientists and the scientist assistants and everything from MIT. And y'all, here's another get this moment because that chess game turned itself on. So Patrick starts playing chess. 
chess game keeps going on, and after about 42 moves, the game beat Patrick, and he came to the conclusion that the spirit of his friend Maurice was there, playing chess with him, and they continued playing chess together for many years after that. Well, Patrick passed away in 2013 at the age of 95, and after that, the chess board just stopped working altogether. And that plaster bust of Maurice that Patrick owned is at the Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum. And I've also heard that another one of the busts that had been made is owned by Bruce Pritchard. And if you're in the wrestling world, you you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, so throughout Maurice's life, he was called everything from the world's ugliest man. And yeah, a, a magazine or newspaper article did actually call him that. They've called him a freak, a human monstrosity. And he was even compared to like being a Neanderthal. Well, because of this, outside of the wrestling ring, Maurice mostly kept to himself. And to me, it sounds like Patrick Kelly and Carl Pagello were the two best friends he could have have had. I think they really understand or, you know, were there for him and, and let him talk or whatever. And I can imagine that when Carl died, and I know they said that it was a heart attack that had killed Maurice, but I really truly feel that it was a broken heart that he died of. And I also read while I was doing my research for this particular episode that um, at times when Maurice would be playing chess with Patrick, he would confide in Patrick that he felt that he was a prisoner in his own body and he was just tired of it. Not only was he basically made fun of for his appearance, that condition also caused him a lot of physical pain. So y'all, what I'm getting at here is that you really don't know what a person is going through. So just be nice. Well, y'all, that's all I have for tonight's episode. Be sure to come back on Friday night for an all new What the Friday.